Okay, so welcome back. I'm Brooke. I'm Tori. Um, today is going to be a little bit different. I know it's going to be a little bit heavier than the previous episodes that we've done um, because I know for me, kind of going through everything, I went through a lot of addictions. Um, it was between it was between drugs, alcohol, sex, um, attention. That's another big one that I had. Um, it's just to the point to where it's like you can have addictions and you can overcome them. Mm -hmm. um, just getting so. in the word of God, going to church, figuring out that's not the way that you wanted to live life. And eventually it could kill you. Mm -hmm. um, Cause there was a couple of times where I thought that was gonna happen and I wouldn't be here today if I continued down that path. Yeah. Um, so with, there was things that I had kind of like wrote down and what we had heard, especially what I had heard Wednesday night um, from Pastor Allen, um, he basically said, he said, always praise him because of what he rescued you from. Mm. Praise is a problem for your problems. That's a good one. And when he said that, I was like, oh, you know, like that really got me. Um, I had a lot of problems growing up, like a lot, a lot. And the other day I ran into somebody who has watched the podcast or the couple of episodes that we have come out with so far. And she kind of, she looked at me and I didn't really know how to take this. And I'm still kind of battling with it because she said, you just, you are too pretty to, to hear of what you've gone through. And I kind of just looked at her and I'm thinking, so because I look a certain way or because now, you know, I, ha I am remarried, you know, mm -hmm. we have kids, I didn't go through anything. Yeah, that, that can kind of be a little confusing because we've said before, there's a reason the statistics are one in four of women deal with some form of abuse. And it's it, most of the time, it's someone you wouldn't even think has gone through that. And especially looking at our lives now, because Skylar and I will be married almost two years. Um, you and Brittany, was it? It'll be, years? it'll be three years. So next March. So like two okay. and a half right now. And so there are so many people that are in our lives now that didn't even know I was married before. Because right. one, it's a, not something I broadcast. Well, like, yeah, and it's like with us, I mean, we just started going to the, like the church mm -hmm. last July. So this this July, last month, was a full year that we've been coming here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just people, and I'm not saying this was somebody at the church that said this, but it was just, I hadn't known this lady for a long time. So it's yeah. like, well, you don't know you me. You don't know me, and you don't know what I've gone through. I just like, you, thank you that you think I'm pretty. Right, I'm like, like hey. well, thanks, but it's not. It kind of just struck me as to like, you never know what somebody is going through. You cannot judge mm -hmm. a book by its cover. Ever, ever. Because you can't. I, I remember, um, this was probably a year ago now. I was at the the park with a mom friend and um, just kind of sharing what we had been going through. And she looked at me. And she goes, "What?" She goes, I never would have known. You never would have guessed. Y'all don't reflect that. Right. And I, that is just a true testament of God's goodness. Well, it, it shows you of what you went through mm -hmm. and now where you're at today. And that's the whole point of this. This is not us just sharing our stories because we want y'all to feel sorry for us or we just want to broadcast all the horrible things that happened to us. Like, no, it's, this, it's, is, it's, this is hard. It's this is not really like, hard to come on here and broadcast to everybody of what actually happened. I mean... And going into details of what happened, because some of it, it's embarrassing. It's humiliating. Yeah. I mean, like, there's sometimes, there's stories that I will tell on here that my family, they don't even know. And they're probably going to watch this, and they're just going to kind of sit there in shock of, well, I didn't know that you went through that. Yeah, there's some things that I've... And I'm like, well, because I was embarrassed. I didn't want to come and tell you that I did this. Like, I'm ashamed of it, that I yeah. did that to myself. And I put myself in situations that should have not happened. 
Yeah, the, yeah, there's some things for me, that, and that's where God comes in and just redeems all of it. But there are some things that, like, even talking about, I'm like, yeah. oh, that's humiliating. Like, I, I definitely went through that a lot longer than I should have. But that's where we want to point everyone back to is when you truly let God take control and have access to the areas of your heart that you don't give to anyone, that's when the true healing can come. Yeah. To where, yes, the things that happened are horrible whether it was from childhood or adulthood the experiences were awful but god can redeem every bit of it if you allow him to and we've said this before healing's not easy no it's it's not like you have one prayer and oh i'm healed and all my problems are going to go away it's a it's a it's a daily thing you walk out yeah well and it's just the fact that He's always there, even in the midst of whatever you're doing, um, trying to pull you from that Mm -hmm. because he doesn't want you to do whatever you were doing. God God doesn't want you stuck in that place of darkness. No. And I mean, he's, there was times where, um, I would be at parties and I'm over here, you know, popping ecstasy over here, smoking weed. I mean, like I was doing whatever that you can think of i probably tried it at least once and obviously this was before this was like during high school years and so i'm like 15 16 17 because this was before i got pregnant with Ryder. i went through a lot of stuff um and i could always i always knew that god was right there Mm -hmm. because i could always hear him in the moment Brooke, go home. Mm -hmm. Stop what you're doing and leave. And of course, I was I was just so hurt. I was trying to numb all of my feelings just from growing up and in the moment that I was willing to try anything to awaken me Mm -hmm. because I felt so shut off. I felt so gross just of the things that I had gone through like I wasn't a human being and it was like I was trying to do something trying to drink away the problems trying to you know get some sort of high to where it would it would awaken me but clearly it was doing the exact opposite Mm -hmm. I mean I would wake up and Not not know what happened and it's like I put myself in situations for that to happen because I was trying to get something going. And, and two, it's you, when you've dealt with trauma at such a young age, you don't really value yourself at all. Oh, no. And it makes you feel disposable. Yeah. Like, I felt like I was not. I felt like I was literally like a piece of garbage. Mm-hmm. And so you, it, you think like, well, why did I get myself into that situation? It's because deep down you don't, your identity in Christ was taken from you. And you're looking for things to get it back. Yeah. And that's just that's just the thing. I mean, even growing up in church, I mean, I was what a what a coach Harvey, he was a drug baby, he was drugged to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. I was the same way. We mm-hmm. were at church ninety percent of the week. Yeah. And I still went through the things that I went through. Oh, and yeah. some of the positions <clears throat> that I got myself in, even as a teenager, I was just like what? Well, yeah, what and I'm mean, doing. We went to church. I mean, growing up, my grandparents were literally like the foundation to our family. So, like my mom's parents, mm-hmm. they went to Oaks Drive in Mesquite, and that's where I grew up. You know, like we would go Sunday, we would go Sunday night, we would go Wednesday night, and stuff like that because they were so grounded with God, they were like, we cannot allow like our grandchildren to not grow up not knowing who he was. Mm -hmm. Um, And so were we at church 24 seven? No, because I am a kid and I was kind of can't go drive myself, you know? Um, But it was just still the fact of, I knew what I should have been doing and saying no to all this, all of these things that I put myself into. But it was the fact that I would go to church. I would feel good because I was at church Mm -hmm. and then I would go home and I would become numb again because then stuff just kept happening. 
And so I'm like, how can I go to church and, you know, our entire family sitting there in the pew and we're worshiping and we're hearing the word of God and, you know, how we're supposed to, you know, live this fulfilled life. And then I go home 30 minutes later and I'm in a hell hole. Yeah. I was so back and forth because I'm like, well, you know, we know how we're supposed to live. We know the things that we should and shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And yet we're agreeing to it. And then I go home and it's the exact opposite. And so growing up that way, I was so confused as to like, well, are we, are we doing this? Are we not doing this? Like, what are we, where are we at? And so at that point, it was just kind of like, well, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And if it makes me feel good, great. I mean. Because you're looking for relief. Yeah, I was looking for something. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was a time, this is going to be really hard to talk about. Um, it was my senior year, and we, me and one of my friends, we went to this party because she was dating this guy, um, and he was having like a bonfire. And she's like, hey, like, do you want to go? It was on the weekend. I was like, yeah, that's fine. So we went, um, and I guess like a couple of his buddies were there. We were all drinking. We were outside. I was sitting on my tailgate of my truck, and we're just having a good time. And one of the guys, he was like, hey, like, do you want another drink? And I was like, yeah, like, that's fine. You know, like, I was like, I'll have another one because I was supposed to drive us back home. I was like, one or two won't hurt. So he brings me another drink, and... Um, that's all I knew, um, until the next morning and I wake up at my friend's house and she's like, you had a fun time last night. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, what are we, where are we? You know? And she's like, well, I had to drive us back. Like you literally like blacked out and he took you inside to like, go lay down. And I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean? And she was just like, yeah. She was like, I really didn't even think that you had that much to drink. And I was like, I didn't. How did I black out? Well, so a couple of like, we just kind of like forgot about it. You know, I went home, did my own thing, school, whatnot. Um, a month had gone by and I didn't get my period. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, am I stressed? Like, mm -hmm. what is happening? And... I waited like another month, <laughs> waited another month. And I'm like, okay, I'm like sweating. Like what is happening? Like, yeah. am I just so stressed just with like home life and whatnot that, I mean, and I was on the drill team, you know, at Roy city. I'm like, is there, am I just overloaded? Like, am I just, am I like irregular? Like what's going on? Yeah. And me and my mom didn't have a good relationship. So it's not like I could come to her and be like, Hey, this is what's going on. And she never like questioned anything. Obviously, she would buy, like, my feminine, feminine, feminine <laughs> products, but, like, she never was like, hey, like, why haven't I went to, go, like, buy you anything? And so I set up an appointment um, at a clinic here in Rockwall that I just paid cash because I was like, I don't want anything yeah. to come back with, like, with, like, insurance or whatnot. And I had a pregnancy test, and they're like, yeah, you're pregnant. And at first I sat there and I was like, no, I'm not. Like, I haven't had sex to where, in like this timeline to where I would become pregnant. And so I'm literally sitting there and I'm just like, what? Like, when? Well, then you just start connecting the dots. And I'm like, okay, I was basically a blacked out on this night. Now this time has happened. Later, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I found a way I reached out because I was like, I think it's one of this, this guy got his number, texted him. And I was like, Hey, like what happened that night? Yada, yada, yada. At first he was like, nothing. Like you just like blocked out. And I was like, well, yeah, but you made me a drink. Like, did you do something? And it came out to where, um, it was a date rape. Oh my God. Um, and like, I don't even think his family like knows because I didn't even tell my family. Um, they still don't know. So <laughs> if you're listening, great. Um, we, I just kind of like, I was just kind of like, okay, well now I'm pregnant. 
And at first he's like, no, it's not mine, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I haven't been with anybody. So where, where do you want this to go? We had met up, we talked about it. He admitted to it. Um, and I was just kind of like, do I go to the cops? Like, do I, what like, do what do, do I do? Yeah. I'm pregnant, this is my senior year. I was, I had a full ride scholarship to SFA. And I was so excited. Cause I was like, you know, I'm the first in my family that will be going to college. And so, um, I waited for like five, six months. Yeah, in my senior year of high school, didn't say a word. And I remember we were at North Park Christmas shopping with my mom and my stepdad at the time. And she was like, oh, these clothes would look so cute on you. And I'm like, oh, they're not gonna fit, you know, here shortly, like, and she had no idea. And then she's buying stuff for my dorm room for Christmas because I was about to go. And we get home and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I've got to tell her, like, I, I'm about to have this kid in a couple of months. And I was like, mom, like, hey, I'm pregnant. She's like, no, you're not. And I was like, yeah, I am. And I didn't tell her how it happened. It was like I was putting that blame on me like I was sleeping around. And so <clears throat> my stepdad at the time, he's like, well, we can think about like abortion. And I literally, I was like, how dare you? Because that, I was like, no. And in my mind at that time at 18, I was like, this is happening for a reason mm -hmm. because it's like, and this is probably not true. I don't know. God knew I needed somebody in my life to keep me going. So he was going to give me a baby. Mm -hmm. And because there was times where I was like, obviously I was shooting up drugs and stuff like that. And I was just like, I didn't know if I was gonna wake up. Yeah. I was so destructive um, that he was kind of, in my mind, I was like, like he's putting, he was putting something like, Brooke, you need to wake up and you're gonna keep going because I'm gonna push you because clearly you're not listening to me and you're gonna keep doing whatever you wanna do. And not that God allowed that to happen. Correct, right. And that's why I was like, but it's a little iffy. But in that moment, that's what I thought. Yeah. And so. Because God works everything out for our good. Right. And so found out that I, I was having a boy and I was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to have a man, a guy in my life that I know will never leave me because that is my son. Mm -hmm. And it's like, is that really what I needed? And so, like, looking back, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly why he did that. I don't have any girls. I have three boys, you know? So he's like, <laughs> I'm not going to give you one man. I'm going to give you three of them that will always be there for you because yeah. you're their mom. And so, I mean, just after that, it was, I mean, he's not in Ryder's life. Um, he's not on the birth certificate. He has no rights to him whatsoever. And it was kind of like a, he was there for the delivery and I haven't seen him since. I don't know where he's at. I don't care to know where he's at because he was like in and out of jail on drugs, stuff like that. I'm like, I'm not going to have that around my kid. Mm -hmm. If you can't get your life together, then you're not going to be in his. Yeah. And so after that, it's like I pushed myself. I went to school. Um, but it was just the fact that before that happened, I was drinking myself to death whatever you, whatever I could get my hands on and I could get my hands on anything, yeah. but it was like the hard, like liquor. I was just, I would drink bottles of it at a time and we would go to parties and they would line up like 20 shots down the um, table. And they're like, we'll give 500 bucks to whoever can do it. Cause nobody can do 20 shots of tequila, you know? And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And they're like, no, like, you're not going to do that. Sure enough. I did it. I was like, hand over the money. I just didn't care. Yeah. And so dealing with all of that, it's to the point where it's like, yes, you can be addicted to things, but you can also allow God to come into your life to get you away from that addiction. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing here today and I'm 
clearly, I mean, I don't feel like I look like I did a lot of hard drugs or anything like that. Y'all are like 27 years right, old. Right, like I might need to get like some Botox here and there, but other than that, you know, I'm, I think I'm pretty good. Um, but it's just to the point where it's like, you know, you can go through the trenches mm-hmm. and you can try whatever you want to do out there, but A, it's not worth it. Yeah. B, you could end up dead in a ditch because I almost did. Um, and see if you just get rooted with God and let him in your life, get in the scripture, he can get you out of that darkness and you don't have to deal with that anymore. Mm-hmm. Cause I was so depressed, like just going through that. Cause I was just like, okay, well, let me do this. I'll wake up the next day and then we'll just do something different. Cause clearly that didn't work. You know, it was just like a constant cycle. And then it was like I was rolling. I would sneak out of my bedroom window after my mom went to bed and I couldn't like take my truck because it was so loud. Um, My friends would come and pick me up and I would just hop over the bushes and we'd go to a party. And then I'd sneak in at like six, seven o'clock in the morning and we would go to church. And I'm just sitting there. I'm literally just like bobbing my head up and down. And she had no clue. Because I just put on this fake front. It's a mask. It's a mask. And And that was literally a routine that I did for years. And nobody knew. And that's why, you know, when you start off with a comment of, you know, you seem too pretty to have gone what you went through. Yeah, I was like, oh, well, you don't know. They mean mean well. well. But that just points it to you can be sitting next to somebody in church and have no idea the hell that they're going through at home, what has transpired in their life. I know it's just you never know what someone's going through. No, you don't. And that's why you have to be so careful how you treat people. Oh, yeah. Because. And like you could be talking to somebody one day and they could decide that day if something were to be off or they heard Mm -hmm. the wrong thing, that would be it for them. That would be their last day. And it's like if you go in somewhere and you treat somebody like just like pure crap, it's like you could have been that person's last chance. Mm -hmm. It's like don't. Like there's no. There's no reason to be rude to anybody just for the fun of it. Yeah, I remember uh, in one of Pastor Mike's messages, he was talking about how um, his dad's name was uh, Pastor B.B. Hankins, and he was talking about how uh, B.B. was the first Jesus he ever met mm-hmm. because, you know, that's his dad. And, and he was he was talking about how especially people that have not grown up in church that you're you're reaching he said you were the first jesus that they meet Mm -hmm. so if you're being a jerk yeah then they're like oh well i don't want i don't want that yeah i don't want that jesus in my life they're like what are they they doing because i don't want any of that his whole message was talking about how you treat others and you know it just is jesus had compassion for everyone He, you know, he loved everyone. Yeah. And he didn't just eat dinner with the Pharisees and his disciples. He was everybody. He was, he had dinner with everybody. Yeah. No matter what path you're going through, no matter what mistake or what wrong decision that you're making, he is literally always there. Mm -hmm. Um, And I had read something last night and it was saying kids who have been emotionally abused have a tendency to engage in risky behavior or use substances at an early age. Mm -hmm. And so it's like that's it really hit home because I was like, yeah, since I was six, I was molested by my older brother. And it's like from then on, that's whenever I was just like I was destructive. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, he you know, we porn issue came up and he would literally we'd be at my grandparents house and we would sit there and he'd be like hey like come in the room and he'd lock the door and he'd turn on porn and i'd be like okay like i'm, I'm getting out of here and he's like no you're gonna sit down and like literally forced me to watch porn and it's like from then on it's just like my brain was altered mm-hmm. and it's like i didn't know what to do and then it says that you'll start, you know, you start behaving in unusual ways. I was constantly like biting my nails. I was constantly just like fidgety because I didn't know like what to do. And there was at a point where I was so 
my counselor had said the way that I was coping with things is you can do different things, obviously, but I was literally pulling my eyelashes out and my eyebrows. I mean, like constantly, I would sit there and just yank them because I was trying to get something. I was like trying to feel something and she's like, did that not hurt? And I'm like, no, I didn't feel anything. And so I was trying, and then there was at points where I would go into the bathroom and I was cutting my wrist and I was cutting my legs just to get something going inside of me that I just like, I just felt so empty. Mm -hmm. And looking back, I'm like, God, like if I, and it's like, I look at my kids and I'm like, I could not imagine like them going through that stuff of like what I went through. Oh God, no. Mm -mm. It makes me like sick to my stomach. You get to a point where, and it's, uh, I think I mentioned this before, where once you have such a traumatic experience, especially as a young child, you know, you're six, mine started at 11. You, you feel like you're obviously alive. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I'm still alive and doing things, but you feel, um, not out of body experience. It's like, you feel like you're in limbo, like you're just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean you don't have these times where you're having a blast. Like I remember, you know, going to the beach is one of my favorite things. Oh yeah. No, there was still moments where I was, yeah. Like our grandparents would take us on trips. I'm like, this is the greatest thing to ever happen. And I loved it. And it was a great memory that I still have, but you still don't feel like you're all there. No. And that's why it's so, it can be so dangerous for young kids is because again, you start looking to other things to, to bring that feeling back. So you feel alive again. Yeah. And that's where, you know, yes, my parents brought me to church all the time, but there are certain things that because they did that, like said, being at a party, you just knew "Mm, it's time to go. Yeah. Like, even though I was in the wrong place, Is it still going? Okay. Even though I was in the wrong place, not doing what I was supposed to do, there was always this certain point where my stomach was like, hey, we got to go. And I say stomach because it's the easiest way to explain it. No, it's like a gut gut feeling. feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And it just got to be where, as an adult, I started to recognize like, who? Yeah. My God saved me time and time and time and time again. Like, even when I got pregnant with my oldest, I mean, my ex and I, we had been together all of, like, four weeks. And I remember I was totally in denial. I was at a concert with my best friend. And I don't remember if I smelled something weird. I just, it was one of those things I was like, hmm, you just, you you know. Yeah. But you're not going to admit it. Yeah. I was in denial. So that night happened, and I waited a whole nother month before I said anything. And we were in, um, we we're actually in Bath and Body Works. Yeah. Because uh, my mom was putting on this huge Thanksgiving feast for my family. And all of the things that I loved at Bath and Body Works, like we're smelling candles and stuff, I just threw up everywhere. <laughs> like, didn't even make it to the bathroom. And my mom looks at me and she's, she's like, like, What is What happening? is wrong with you? Well, we had had chili the night before. So she's like, Oh, food poisoning. So we go to another store, start smelling potpourri, and, and I it's do it the again. Same thing. She goes, "We're going home," and I was like, "Oh, here it goes." And at this point, like I'm not like 16; I'm 20 years old at this point. <laughs> We're going home, and you're grounded. <laughs> like, and we went upstairs, took the test, and I mean, had, did not have to wait five minutes. It was it like, was like All right. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I knew. Yeah. Um. And I was in denial because I had dealt with um, eating disorders in college. At the time, I was heavily into CrossFit. Um, and so I was not eating properly already. So my cycle wasn't regular. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it's just because no, I'm stressed a, out. I'm working fluke. out too much. Yeah. It's a fluke. And I remember my mom, my mom, love her. She's like, we're doing, she wanted a blood test, whole nine yards. So we go. And like maybe three hours later, I get a call from the office. And she goes, you, you know, you're pregnant and I have her on speaker. And I was actually standing in a store with my best friend. And I said, I said, well, you know, like how many weeks? She goes, honey, you're well pregnant. Like, it was 10 weeks at this point. And she's like, honey, you're pregnant. Like, <clears throat> and I just remember thinking like, okay, here we go. And, you know, 
I, you know, immediately thought, well, you know, you're pregnant, you get married, and that's how you fix everything. Yeah, exactly. Mm, Does not fix anything. Does not fix anything. Just because you have a baby with them does not mean you have to marry them. And so even though we did get married, had another kid, I don't regret it because I got two amazing kids out of it. But it just go it does go against what a lot of people believe because, you know, if you start a family with that person, that means you have to have a life with them. And that's just not the case. Yeah. And that's what my grandparents, I mean, they obviously harped on that just because obviously they were like the foundation to our family when it came to God and just being in the word and obviously living a fulfilling life. But they were just, they kind of looked at me and they're like, so does this mean that, you know, like y'all are going to get married? This is what, and I was like, no, like, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Like I did not ask for that to happen. Yeah, I didn't even know who this guy was. So why all of a sudden, just because he got me pregnant, now I have to live my life with him. Like, I don't even know him. I don't even mm-hmm. know his last name, you know? And so it just became the thing where it's like, no, he's not, you know, obviously in Ryder's life. Um, he was there for the birth. But other than that, I don't know where he's at. I I don't. I can't tell you where he is. Yeah. I don't even know if he's like here or if he's in jail, he's in prison. I don't, I don't have a clue. Um, but it was just, I came across a scripture last night just to kind of wrap all of this in and it's Psalms 46, one through three. And it says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. So basically, you can go through the darkest of times. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring you out of it if you let him. Yeah. And that's where I had to come into a realization to where it's like, I didn't want to keep continuing living on the path that I was. Um, Because like even after, I mean, before I got pregnant, um, obviously unexpectedly i went through obviously the drugs and the alcohol but i was so engulfed in wanting attention from any guy that i could get it from Mm -hmm. it was kind of like almost like sickening because i was still i was trying to fill that void of not being wanted and not feeling good enough and pretty enough because that's what i was always told so it's like any ounce of attention that i could get from a guy it's like i grabbed onto it whether it was like negative or positive attention i still wanted it and i craved it and that became an addiction as well which Mm -hmm. then led into a sex addiction and when i tell you it was constant and it was so bad and fighting through that addiction it's like I was so disgusted with myself because I'm like, you were literally just giving your body to anybody. I mean, not like anybody, but like mm-hmm. somebody. I mean, obviously, if it's somebody that I had, you know, like I was attracted to or whatnot, I would just be like, yep, OK, I guess this is what's happening. And that's what we would do. And it it's not funny, but like looking back at it, I'm like, oh, my gosh, like I was one of those girls to where I had a rotation like a Monday through Sunday. Um, planned rotation Monday night this one would come over Tuesday night this one would, it, it was just it was a rotation and that is so I mean it's embarrassing to admit and I mean Britain just found out about it like a couple months ago because we were talking about something and we were talking about addiction and um, I was like you can get over an addiction Mm -hmm. And he was just like, no, he's like, I completely agree. And I was, and he kind of like looked at me and he goes, well, wait, like, how do you know that? (laughs) And I kind of stopped. I was like, oh no. You know, like this was one of those things. What do you know about that? It's like, I I didn't want to tell him because I didn't want him to look at me a different way, Mm -hmm. you know, because I already looked at myself a different way whenever I was going through that. And so just coming out of that addiction, it is possible if you reach out to God and you, I was literally like, not, I was begging him. Mm-hmm. I would like sit. Um, and this was obviously after my divorce. Cause I was just like, Oh my gosh, like the stuff that I put myself through, it cannot happen again. And it's like, I didn't want to slip into old habits mm-hmm. 
because now I'm not married. So I'm like, oh, well, I can go do whatever I want to now. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not held down by somebody that didn't want me. So now let me go find somebody that does want me. And so then my mindset was like, well, Brooke, you did that one time and then you became addicted to it. So let's not become addicted to something that you already overcame. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I, I mean, I just prayed and prayed and prayed. And I was just like, I cannot become that person again. Mm-hmm. And then there came Britain. So, but it's just, it is possible to overcome things. You just have to want it. Yeah, because I even think um, just relationships can become an addiction. Oh, yeah. To where you're so engulfed in it that that's all you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, um, so my dad's side of the family, um, there were a couple people, um, heavy smokers, yeah. like heavy smokers. Um, I remember having a relative one time make a comment about my great grandmother, like, oh, if she can light it, she'll smoke it. And I was like, what is that? I mean, I was a kid, but like as an adult, I remember hearing that. And now looking back and knowing the things that I know, You're I like, now oh, understand yeah. what that meant. Um, but I think for me, because the person that abused me as a child was such a heavy drinker and constantly smelled like cigarette smoke, that was just a huge turnoff to me. Like to this day, to this day, like I, there's just certain smells like whiskey immediately I'll vomit. Like I cannot, because that's what his breath smelled like all the time. Yeah. Like smoke to me, like it just immediately reminds me of him. Yeah. And that's one of the things that um, we say, like, you don't just get healed and then all of a sudden it goes away. This is a daily thing. So, like, any moment that that's triggered, I immediately start praying in the Holy Spirit because I'm Mm -hmm. like, nope, we're not going to we're not going to have an anxiety attack right now. Well, and that kind of comes back to temptations, too, Mm -hmm. because, you know, there's I mean, there's those thoughts, those memories have attachments and feelings, like I said before. Mm -hmm. And if you don't immediately take authority over that it can drag you back to that place. Mm-hmm. And I have just gotten to a point where I'm like, I will never go back to that place. Oh, yeah. Not that there won't be hard days where I feel like it'd oh, there's, be easier Yeah, there's to go times back. where I'm just like, you know what? I could just go up to the road really quick to the liquor store and mm-hmm. just buy whatever I wanted to, go to my room and just drink all of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's multiple times. And even whenever me and Britain were, I think we had just, we were engaged already. I was at my old job and I just became so stressed. I mean, it was just like, obviously him coming into the picture, trying to figure out this new dynamic of, you know, now having somebody mm-hmm. else come in, you know, and like he wasn't working. So it's like, now I'm providing for him and then three kids, not getting child support, not getting any help, whatever, whatever that was. But I was so stressed. I would leave work I would go by the gas station. I would get a 12 pack of Trulies, Mm -hmm. go home, drink all of them and pass out and then go back to work the next day. And it became a daily thing. And like, I would, I would hardly talk to Britain. And there came a point to where he sat me down and he said, I don't know who this person is because you were not like this. Mm -hmm. whenever we first started, you know, talking and dating or whatnot. And he goes, whatever this is cannot continue or we will not continue. Because he was like, I don't, who are you? Mm -hmm. And it really just took me back to, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm slipping back into my Mm -hmm. old habits. And I was like, absolutely not. And you don't realize how much now when someone comes in that truly loves you and sees you the way that God sees you, you don't realize how bad it was because you were doing those things by yourself. Oh, yeah. And so when it's pointed out, you're like, oh, did I really just do that again? Yeah. And and then you really, really, it's like we said, it is a daily thing. Mm -hmm. You have to choose that I swear, I'm going to make it through. Like, I haven't cried yet. There's been times, like, I just got choked up. I'm like, I I just, I'm like, and that was another thing the Lord delivered me from. Like, I used to refuse to cry. Like, you can't make me cry because I cried so much as a kid. No, I know. And that's not healthy at all. It's not. Like, there's actually, like, scientific proof of the stress and everything that gets released when you cry. Yeah. (laughs) And it gets it out of your system. Um, But it was just a revelation to me when I was stepping out of that relationship and really on my own with the kids that 
there were certain habits that I had developed and didn't realize how checked out I was. Mm. Like for me, I sound stupid, but I was addicted to coming home, getting whatever snack I wanted and sitting on the couch until bedtime. Yeah. Like, because you were I, mentally checked because out I was for the mentally day. checked out, but I'm here in a new environment where I can set the tone of my home. I'm, you know, in charge and I was still doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Nothing and it lasted was, nothing for like the changing. first two months we moved into that house. And I literally was sitting there one day and AJ came up and wanted to, I don't know if it was a board game or card game or something. And I looked at the clock and it was nine o'clock at night. Now, granted, it was like a Friday, Saturday night, but I had been sitting on that couch for four and a half hours. Yeah. Just watching TV. And it, it got so bad to the point where I'd be like watching TV and on my phone at the same time. Right. Like, you're not really focusing on anything. Yeah. You're, you're just, just kind of in the room. Yeah. And it was at that moment that I just decided, like, it was for a solid two months. I just didn't watch TV. I just, because I knew that that was something that I had done so much Mm -hmm. that I needed to cut all the way back to where now I can enjoy a TV show here and there. It's like you kind of, like, regroup yourself Mm -hmm. and be like, okay, we need to take a pause on whatever this is going on. Or just completely remove it. So me and the kids, we got outside. We'd go on a walk. We'd go to the park. We started every Monday during the school year is our library days. Like, it just, we had to, I had to create a different routine to show them that, like, life shouldn't be so depressing and dark to where you're just living to survive. Mm -hmm. And... That was the point for me where I was like, okay, I now have two people just watching me. How is, how's, how's mommy going to handle this? Well, yeah, because I didn't want them. Yeah. I don't want them seeing like, oh, well you go to work all day. You're stressed. You come home and you drink yourself to go to sleep, to repeat it. Like that's not healthy. That's not life. Yeah. No, you don't do that. Like, yeah. what are you fulfilling? What are you doing with your future? And so at that point, whenever Britain had said that, I was like, oh my gosh, like I was literally slipping back into old ways. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And so, and we, I mean, in the beginning of our relationship, I mean, we would go out, I mean, to bars and we would go every time that we would go out to eat, like we would order all these drinks and stuff like that. And we were just having a grand old time. Yeah. And like now, you know, after we started going back to church and whatnot, it was just like, we don't, that's just not who we are. That craving's not there anymore. No. Yeah, and it's like, I'll, and it's like, I'll look at a drink at first. <laughs> like I would see something and I would immediately order it. And then I'd keep reordering it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would literally tell the waitress, like, just keep them coming. If it gets to this certain point, go yeah. ahead and bring another one in because I want to continue to drink. And so now it's like, we go, we go out and it's just like, I look at it and I'm like, mm. mm-hmm. it's like, I don't even, I don't want it. Yeah. And that's, that is when, you know, that just goes back to regularly getting yourself into the word and your prayer life. Because when you're filling that void with the things of God, the cravings for other things become less and less and less to where they're not existing. Not that that the temptation doesn't come. No, they just just diminish. It's like, you'll have that thought and then you're like, eh, no, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Addiction can be anything. It can be the heavy stuff or it can be the light stuff like TV. Oh, yeah. Um, Your phone. Uh, smutty novels. Like, <laughs> just a lot of things. That, I like, will say I have been. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, I've been in this, like, book reading era and I was not a book reader. And all of a sudden, I'm not kidding you, like, for the past two months, I have gone to Barnes & Noble and half price books and ordering off of Amazon and it's bad, <laughs> but it's so good, you know, because I feel like I was like replacing like one addiction. Now I'm yeah. with another addiction, but this is obviously a more healthy one because I'm not destroying myself. Yeah, if that makes sense. Anyway, yeah. so, but uh, the, it's just it doesn't have to be like shopping. That was a huge one for me when I was younger, like especially like 15 to 18, 19, like. I wasn't, I didn't desire cigarettes or drinking or drugs, but I had to fill it somewhere. The yeah, amount so- of shoes I had, oh my gosh, it's still a problem. <laughs> like, uh, not as bad as it was, but shoes and purses are my thing. Like, I yeah. can't tell you how many purses are in my closet. I have not touched one. I use a diaper bag right now. Diaper bag is my purse. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just, 
it was different things for me. It was, you know, because your routine can become an addiction yeah. if it's not a healthy routine. Right. Um, and so just because, and you might not realize that you're addicted to something until you take it away. Right. And then you're like, oh, uh, I was depending on that. Yeah. I was depending on, like, I had, in order to get through my day, I had to have that. Right. And I feel like that's what you kind of have to come to the realization, kind of like wrapping this whole entire thing up is your addiction, it, it should be God. You should yeah. be addicted to wanting, him, like, wanting Him and mm -hmm. being in the Word and just asking Him just to come into your heart. And just start fixing stuff. And that way you can actually mm -hmm. live a long life and not, you know, be a found in a ditch. life, yeah. I mean, that's that would be nice. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's, that about wraps it up. Yep. Yeah. yeah.